everyone, hello, hello, and welcome all to Pink Yourself Up. I'm Janina Chan, and this is going to be an amazing online event brought to us by Fit Flop, a brand that we all love, of course. That's why we're here watching. But if you haven't liked the page yet, go ahead and do so. Okay, so now let's go ahead and meet our lovely guests today who will be shedding more light on this campaign and advocacy, of course, sharing their knowledge on their expertise as well on breast cancer and their personal battles as well with this disease. Okay, so first up, we have an oncologist with 40 years in his practice, a diplomat of the American and Philippine Board of Surgery and the chairman of the Department of Surgery and Medical Director of Chinese General Hospital and Medical Center. Let's all welcome Dr. Samuel Adams. Hi, Doc. Hi, how are you? Doing well. Good to see you here. Okay, yes. Doc is so busy. And then Asha, we're bugging him during his you know, <laughs> office hours. <laughs> okay, so we have like a consultation. At the no, okay, so in, a, in just a bit, let's welcome the rest of our guests today. Next up, we've got the president of our partner foundation, of course, I Can Serve, who has also won the fight against breast cancer two times over. The very strong Miss Nikoi de Guzman. Hi, Miss Nikoi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Okay, so next up, we are also joined by two lovely breast cancer warriors. The first is Miss Maricris Capistrano, a young professional with over 13 years of experience in social economic development work through advocacy and research. Currently, she is managing a small business as well in the food and retail sector with a vision to further expand her passion projects. Let's all say hi to Miss Maricris. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Looking lovely. Okay, so next up, last but not the least, we were joined by Miss Kerry Zamora, a multi hyphenated mother of four, running her very own business ventures and a lifestyle blog as well called Flats and Stilettos. Mm, I like those folks. <laughs> she is also recently um, spearheading the Caring Getty program in the city of San Juan, which aims to make treatments for breast cancer more accessible to more women in the city. Hi, Miss Kerry Zamora. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I love it. Getting Kerry naman talaga. Oh, okay. So, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Pink yourself up. <laughs> I see that everyone is wearing pink, looking great and blooming, diba? I mean, more than ever. I think this is a this whole month, October, is a reason to celebrate life so all the more. Kaya naman magmamerienda tayo. <laughs> uh, do you guys have your snacks? And na ba sila? Okay, I love it, diba? In solidarity, pati sa snacking. <laughs> okay, so feel free to eat those snacks. Snacks and lang to, chikahan lang talaga. You know, we really, you know, this topic can be so overwhelming, especially for those who are threatened by this disease and for the family members of those who are having uh, or who have survived or who are currently battling breast cancer. I relate to that too, coming from a family with survivors, and um, unfortunately, I lost my aunt to it. So, you know, this is a very, very important discussion more than ever, but we're here to, you know, lighten things up too, but at the same time, shed um, shed light and really educate everyone watching right now. Okay, and give them comfort and strength, okay, more than ever. So, first of all, um, I would just want to say hi to everyone. How are you guys doing? I know this whole pandemic situation, the new normal doesn't feel normal still somehow, right? So, how are you um, all pinking yourself up or perking yourself up through these difficult times? Let's start with, um, sige si Doc muna. <laughs> Doc, Doc Samuel, kamusta naman? How okay, like, man po. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, regarding the first question about COVID, I happened to, uh, they just assigned me to be the medical director of Chinese in January, just in time for COVID. So I've been at the forefront of this fight uh, against COVID. The good news is uh, it's ebbing, no? It's ebbing. We were up to about yes. a thousand admission, no, no, 100 per day admission about two months ago. We're down to about 30 now. So I think the situation's improved a lot. And this is across Metro Manila. Okay? Uh, although we are still seeing about 2,500 to 3,500 every day, the new ones, I, we feel that um, the virulence of the uh, virus is probably getting better. So, hope and pray na I think uh, effort to the local government, the DOH, no? 
uh, I think finally the local governments are move, are doing their job yes. about contact tracing and isolation. No? And also the people, no? at least in Metro Manila, I think people are more aware now of the uh, consequence of uh, not wearing masks and uh, shields. No? So I think overall, I think it's better. October has always been special to us because uh, breast cancer is number one among, among cancer in the Philippines and number one uh, in the world for women. So I'm also a member of the uh, Philippine Breast Cancer Society and I happen to sit in the uh, as a president of the Society of Surgical Oncology in the Philippines. So talagang nasa forefront kami sa fight. That's why when my niece, when my, well, my apo called me up for this, so for this Zoom meeting, I actually referred her referred her to another breast surgeon, Dr. Sherry Lee. Okay lang, she happens to be in this post this morning. That's why I'm sitting out for her. Mm-hmm. I think you need to the babae daw na maganda. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just said, wala kang wala, wala choice yan. Si Maggie, wala kang choice, Maggie. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's good to hear from you and it's great to hear that, you know, we are slowly but surely, you know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of this whole um, global crisis. And yes, doubled with the fact that it doesn't mean that, uh, but I know the, the headlines are all about COVID-19, but there are still diseases that are life-threatening too, like breast cancer, that we still have to address that we still have to address on top of the whole situation. So yes, more than anything, we do have to um, be aware. So thank you for for that, Doc. And I hope you're doing well. Um, let's say hi to the rest. How are you ladies de-stressing <laughs> with the whole situation? Let's, yeah, go ahead, Miss Nikoi. Oh, let's unmute Mona, Miss Nikoi, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's unmute, okay. Let's pick it up from there. Okay, so hi, Miss Nikoi. How are you distressing from the entire situation? Well, just uh, getting by day by day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to make plans during this pandemic, so you just face things as as they come. But yeah, you just we just remain positive. Uh, as you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's quite a busy, well, actually the busiest month for I Cancer Foundation. Right. And the many things that we do is what uh, keeps me positive, actually. That's great. Thank you so much once again, Ms. Nikoi, for I Can Serve Also. It, yes, it is a busy month, so thank you so much for squeezing us into your busy schedule. Okay, so um, now let's, you know, let's really talk about um, breast cancer already. So again, diretso na tayo. And I think one of the first or the first question would usually be, so again, for Doc Ang, Dr. Ang, diba? can you share to us exactly what are the signs to look out for diba? when it comes to breast cancer and what can we do about it exactly off the bat? Go okay. ahead. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it's a, uh, the, usually the first sign for most Filipino women, they come to us because of the breast lump. So, uh, and uh, that, that, I know, that for us is kind of late. So we'd like to get the breast cancer before they can even feel the breast mass. And that's uh, the, our effort and I can serve is doing a great job on that. To, 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 it's the awareness, eh? it's the awareness of uh, breast cancer being uh, possible for everybody. You know? So for me, it's just, uh, because of the lack of uh, education, no, lack of information to your boss, you know, and because People in the Philippines have more pressing problems than looking at their breasts or examining their breasts. They tend to overlook na importante to breast. That's why um, I can serve, and of course our societies always uh, emphasize on breast self-examination. You know? Now, uh, when maybe uh, my apo uh, asked me to say something about this, I thought about uh, how do you make it aware now, now that with the uh, social media, they can download anything from YouTube or uh, Google on how to breast exam. Very simple now. Even in the barrio, I think people have access now to internet. Siguro yun, and one way that we can make it more, uh, make it very, uh, 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 I guess, uh, widely available by asking people to download you know, how do you examine your breast. So now that's number one. Number two, the, the use of mammogram now. 
the mammogram, uh, the recommended is uh, 50 and above. Ang problema ng mammography, if you do it too young, and lalo na mga Filipino breasts, they're very dense, usually hindi makikita. There are two types of mammogram. One is the digital, and one is the analog. Siguro, in the, uh, siguro 10 years ago, a digital mammo would cost about 25 million pesos for a hospital or a clinic to acquire them. Now it's come down to about uh, more reasonable, maybe 8 or 6 million. So it's more widely available now for most centers in the Philippines. You know? So that's the next best thing. You know? kung, uh, di, kung, uh, kung in areas na walang mammogram, breast examination. But better mammogram, because there are signs that we see in the mammogram that will show that something's brewing already mm-hmm. without even feeling a breast. Okay. So, yeah. Understood. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much, Doc. So at least, diba, may two options tayo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of overwhelmed pa na parang, wait, maybe I can do my own breast self exam for now, which is exactly what we're advocating for, especially here that's in right. this session. Because that's well, the I want to... first step, baby steps now. I want to correct another misconception among many okay. women that mammogram causes cancer. Mm, okay. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, radiation. Just imagine uh, na one mammogram exposure is like uh, spending maybe half a day in Boracay. Radiation. You know, when you get exposed in the sun, you have radiation. Uh, you know, one trip to LA and back is uh, the exposure you get for CT scan in the plane. So, walking in the beach in Boracay, as you know, you, and I'm point ko, it's safe. It's safe. Okay. Uh, it's safe. That's my point, no? So, lang, walang, walang, just because now, na mammogram si every year, kaya siya nagkulun ng cancer. That's not true. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for, diba? At least today, we're also debunking certain myths and, ano ba? Myth or yeah. fact. Okay. So, so, yeah, from a doctor's point of view, let's, uh, move forward to a uh, survivor's point of view. How about you, Miss Mary Chris? Maybe you could share to us about your whole experience and you know how you found out. And then, did you did, were you going through the breast self exam yourself, or um, yes, maybe you can talk us through that entire journey? Oh uh, yeah. So in my case, um, uh, I actually felt the pain. Uh, year 2016 it was december 2016 when i first felt like something's like a bit like hugging me on this side of my breast it's so painful not a good hug (laughs) so so i asked my husband is it possible that my breast is like um something like that (laughs) yeah because because it's really it's really very uncomfortable yeah but then again just like what dr um ang mentioned i overlook it because it was December, so my focus was for Christmas. Yeah. So uh, party, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> gatherings, yeah. Yeah, so gatherings, parties, and and all that. So I decided to to delay hmm. my checkup, and then come January of twenty seventeen, um, I didn't I didn't feel the pain anymore. Month of January, but then February the pain comes back. So I was really scared. So I asked my husband uh, if he could help me um, check my breast because I'm scared. I'm already scared at that time. So I cannot, um, I cannot touch my breast. Honestly, I cannot. I don't even look at myself in the mirror because I'm already scared. And then when my husband um, checked my breast, he was like, "Oh no, something like that." He already f- uh, found the the lump. At the back of my left uh, breast, yeah, oh. at the back side. So uh, that's when I found out. So immediately I went to the hospital for for what's that? For ultrasound, ultrasound, yes. just the, just the ultrasound. And then it was written there that it is highly suggestive for malignancy. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's how I found out that I have a breast cancer. Grabe, no? Parang yeah. it, you really can't judge a book. It's really like, fast. It's really so fast. Hindi, hindi mo kang naka, <laughs> diba? Grabe. And I think yeah. that's, you know, you are, you, all of you are really inspiring us, especially those who are battling the fight na, you know. Um, okay, it may be scary, but, you know, we still have to do something about yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Take the necessary steps. Yes. Actually, um, 
I realized ko na if I if I only checked myself when I first felt the pain, maybe it also helped in the treatment, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because um actually it was already late because it was already February. Mm-hmm. If I only uh, went to the doctor uh, on that time, na naramdaman ko yung pain, December, maybe uh, medyo na lessen yung yung problem. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, better, better uh, talaga. Yes, better treatment. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Miss Maricris. How about you, Miss Carrie? How was your story like when you found out? Okay, um, I was I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer last year. Um, that was Feb 2019. Um, that was actually the time that I felt the most healthiest. I I was in the gym every day. Um, I found the lump through while I was changing out of my my sports bra. Um, it wasn't so big. It was two cm. Then um, I I had a I went for a mammogram and an ultrasound, and they found. Actually, um, not just on the lung, not just on the breast, but they found a suspicious lymph node in my underarm area. That's why I think it's also important for the ladies to not just um, uh, do self examinations on the breast area, but also on the armpit area, because mm-hmm. um, sometimes they can feel it already. Like, the, the, yeah, the, like you can have a lump in the like the, on on your underarm. Um, and also, um, don't be scared of mammograms because they don't hurt. And you can also do um, the ultrasound um, if you're below 40. Because I was only 39 at that time, so I, you know, breast cancer was the last thing in my mind because I was thinking only the older women would get it, but actually, even young women can. Oh wow. Grab it. Well, aside from that, wow, 39 last year. <laughs> so, wow, you don't look your age at all. Thank okay. you. Well, grab it. And and how was the journey so far? Um, recovered. Um, na. Uh, yes, I'm. Well, actually, I'm. I'm doing an, um, anti-hormone medicines. I'm, that's what I'm taking now. Um, I'll be on it for 10 years because my my ca- my breast cancer is estrogen driven. Um, so. There, basically, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still recovering because it's been only 17, 18 months. Okay, yes, grab it. I can't believe. I mean, when I was looking through, everyone's like, okay, they're all survivors. Usually, when you think of survivors, because my mom is a cancer survivor as well, and it's been years. And but you know, usually you know, you think of me. Now, when you say survivor, it's been years. But grab it. You're still like, uh, I'm a survivor. <laughs> And like just seeing your smiling faces of hope, just like oh, comforts me. And again, to everyone watching who is fighting the battle, kapit lang, de ba? Look at everyone here, naman. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for sharing. And I think that's one the the for for women nga naman, no? parang may there is something to do with the hormones talaga. So kung alam niyo na off the bat na medyo hormone na kayo or something, all the more you have to be aware too. Am I right? Yeah. Prevention and like preventing sugar, also, de ba? De ba? I I heard about diet. Malak malaking bagay din yan when it comes to this disease. Can anyone share in terms of diet and lifestyle? Okay, go ahead, Doc. Just unmute yourselves. <laughs> Let's unmute. Uh, yeah, I was uh, impressed by you know by Gary and Krista, the way they present themselves. Incredible. Well, you know, I know na. You have this feeling in your heart na baka it may come back. I've always may ganyan talaga. But uh, looking at you, I think na important yung passive spirit. Now, mm-hmm. talking about sugar, you know, I have a lot of patients coming to me. Doc, yung sugar daw, uh, feeder daw ng cancer yan, no? Mm-hmm. I, ang counterpoint ko is like this, eh. If you follow that logic, logic, don't eat na lang. Don't eat. Don't eat anything. The cancer will die. Of course, you will die with the cancer too. Because everything we eat Has boils sugar. down to sugar, simple sugar, glucose. That makes simple okay. So, walang walang katotohanan yan. No? Now, uh, preventing sugar. Uh, st- well, well, if you uh, cut down on sugar consumption, it's good for the rest of the body, for your uh, insulin level, for other mm-hmm. things. So. But nothing to do with, to do with cancer. Mm. No, so that's very clear. No, 
uh, as far as breast cancer, wala naman prevention yun eh. Kaya importante yung uh, uh, breast exam and mammogram. Because the only secret to a, a long-term survival is uh, early diagnosis. I'm not saying that uh, for Kerry kasi stage 3 ka na. Pag stage 3 kasi, tama si Kerry. Pag estrogen driven yan, uh, that means uh, uh, the, the drug, uh, either tamoxifen or the new aromatase inhibitors, can uh, stop the action of estrogen on her breast cancer. Kung may namasyal na yan kay Kelly, Kerry, kay, kay Kerry, na namamasyal na sa ibang parte ng katawan, the anti-estrogen therapy will keep it in check for a long, long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So I guess just not take it to an extreme. And I think, I think mas worse pa sa sugar ang stress, di ba, Doc? <laughs> stress talaga. Di ba sabi ko nila, laughter is the best medicine. So ano, magtawa na nalang tayo today. Pero di ba, Doc? Although, you know, you know, that's like being the most ideal, parang idealist person na. Pero may mga ano naman din tayo na mimit na sobrang happy and sobrang healthy and active. And yet, natatamaan pa rin sila ng breast cancer, di ba? So you really can never say. <laughs> Maybe it's part of their, ano na, um, purpose to shed light on the and the on the this disease and to empower women fighting the battle okay so let's go back to miss nikoi naman of i can serve tell us you know that's why your foundation was built because of the this very challenging um disease and battle tell us more about i can serve i mean it's been around since i can remember and uh share to us your um programs right now yeah. So, um, I can serve. Uh, foundation provides help and uh, hope and help to women with breast cancer. Um, the nice thing about I can serve is that um, all of us, all of us in the board, all of us, all the officers, and most of our um, uh, our volunteers are all breast cancer survivors. Um, we promote and conduct early breast cancer detection programs in local communities, providing sustained access to accurate diagnosis. So I myself, uh, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of, um, of uh, early detection. I've had uh, breast cancer twice, 12 years apart, and both of them are stage one. So yeah, and then the the because um, my second one it's it's really uh, I I found out about the lump is really it's really through self breast exam or breast self exam so I really um, advocate that <laughs> and then um, for I can serve that's it we um, we conduct um, seminars so that we can um, uh, teach women how to do the proper breast self exam and then uh, during this pandemic we're still at it yeah despite the difficulties that you know. Uh, all those things, uh, we're still at it. And uh, yeah, that's what I can serve us. Support for each other, support for all women. Yep. Amazing. Thank you so much. Hi, grave. You know, iba talaga. Um, like hearing it from, from someone who has um, went through it, like it's a real battle talaga. And you take it, parang when I'm hearing you, parang, Parang wow, hindi naman sa wala lang pero grabe, ang galing ninyo. You're just so strong guys. Panakot naman natin ang ating mga survivors and our guests today. Grabe. Okay, so I think, you know, one of your main programs nga is to always do your own self-examination. And this is like, um, ang suggested dito is once a month, right, Ms. Nicoy? Yeah, once a month, um, probably something like on the same day, usually oh. on the month. Yeah, and then That's kung pwede... Yeah after after your period a few days after your period okay, that's the best. a few days at mga around three, three oh days. yeah three days yes to, okay three days after your period you can self-check and again all the information we can also find them on your page right yes and i can serve uh www.icanserve.org everything is in there yeah awesome. okay so to everyone watching uh, um you know again remind yourselves or the, the, your loved ones to self-examine all the time as much as possible on a regular basis like, we have to normalize this diba? Na parang it's as normal as putting a, a napkin <laughs> diba? Dapat na siya, diba? okay dapat ano na siya, automatic okay so now you know before we move on we still have um we're actually almost down to half but um, we do have other FAQs later on, but you know, I think we need a little breather. Okay, ba? Medyo mag ano man tayo. Inhale, exhale. <laughs> okay. I'm not a yoga instructor or anything, but I think it's now become common knowledge that 
deep breathing really reduces stress and anxiety. And I think this little activity will help us de-stress a little more. Let's do it with everyone watching. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, first up, calma muna tayo. Go stress kayo. You know, it's a beautiful Saturday. Don't let anything rain on your parade. Okay, let's quiet down a little bit. I'm gonna tone down a few notches lower. Okay, let's breathe in and out. If you want to close your eyes, go ahead. Just follow my voice. And let's do deep breathing all together. And exhale. You shake your hands, stretch your fingertips. Stretch your neck. Breathe in through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth. The deeper and longer the breaths, the better. Okay, circulate. Let your body's circulation flow. Take in all the good energy. It's the weekend. It's the new normal. But we're gonna get through this together and inhale exhale one more time <sighs> there we go you know this is one of the things i look forward to pag nag yoga ako may mga iba't ibang klaseng breathing pa nga eh, may lion's breath pag pinapanood ko parang jahe gawin no? parang <laughs> but it helps diba? it's like you're releasing all the toxins and talaga may articles that say Deep breathing helps release toxins, okay? Baby steps for everyone watching right there. I hope it relaxed you and our guests today. Namaste. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think for the ladies, for our survivors, and for Doc also, aside from medicine, we still have to back it up by holistic wellness, diba? Right? And yeah, move forward to, okay, we have a few more questions before we wrap things up. Some FAQs. Okay, so first, um, FAQ is, you know, where can I get a consultation if I don't want to visit a hospital? The ba yung ibang tao talaga ayon nila para, oh, I I need hospitals for the others ha. Tato talaga to. It's a fear. <laughs> okay, are there teleconsultation services or home service options available to everyone who wanna have their breasts double checked by a doctor? Any of you know any information on this? Go ahead. I can I can start. I can start. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, almost every hospital, at least in Metro Manila, even in the provinces, have what they call teleconsult. No? Just call the trunk line or email. It's a, that's the new, the, the one good thing of COVID, no? the new teleconsultation. Yes. Like boom, no? mm -hmm. And uh, most of the hospitals have this service. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're right, you know. Uh, for me, no, patient, I don't want to go to the hospital. But there are a lot of uh, uh, outpatient outpatient facilities uh, doing mammogram outside the hospital. Mami, you just check the mm. internet yes. in your local neighborhood. No? Mami, no? Yeah. And uh, for me, no, man, eh, you just teleconsult your surgeon. Usually, any surgeon, eh, surgeon or even your obstetrician, gynecologist, over there will be But any physician can help you. Okay. Important, eh, yung mammogram, uh, you have to do, you have to go to the hospital, uh, clinics for that. Eh. But may and mga physician may available na yan. Mm, okay. so, yun. And uh, most of the hospitals now are very conscious about the, the COVID phenomenon. And yes. they have separated out the non-COVID and COVID uh, areas. So it's quite safe now to come back, come back to the hospital. Okay, all right. Can I add something to that? Go ahead. Yeah, because um, we've had two seminars already, two webinars already in I Can Serve for our members, wherein it's basically tackling uh, breast cancer during the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. And in general, um, we survivors got scared. Mm -hmm. when, especially when, when the, the lockdown began. And... Um, our uh, our checkups became delayed. Like me, I just had mine in October. I was supposed to have it April, but we were on lockdown. And um, you know uh, that time frame 
many things can happen. Maybe from stage one, if you're really aggressive, who knows? You can be a stage two or three kung madali yung checkup. So we had we, we got doctors also to, to, to speak to us uh, in those webinars, and they prompted us to you know go to to your doctors, go ahead and see them. If you can go to the grocery, then you can go to your hospital also. Okay. Because ah uh, yeah, because ano okay. para okay. kumbaga mas prepared pa nga ang hospital eh, mas maayos ang protocol. So don't be scared. Go. <laughs> do your, do the precautions and everything, but please go. So I also needed that push because I was scared as well. Because yeah, gonna... that notion na we are immunocompromised and I was like Oo nga, no, mas, mas natatakot ako dun sa hospital eh mas maayos yung protocols nila when it comes to to COVID. Yeah. So, yeah, please go if needed. Yes. Okay, don't mm-hmm. be afraid. Yes. There's a <laughs> for that. It's called I Can Serve Foundation. <laughs> okay, if you need an extra push, si Miss Nicoy mismo tatawag. Pumunta yeah. ka na sa hospital. Oh. Okay. Alright, so uh, it's great that we have this community diba? more than ever now to remind us not be afraid and yeah to remind us that oh, naman pala. for a hospital they have to double down on yes. their sanitation and protocols all the more so let's not be afraid <laughs> they're doing yeah. their jobs okay mm-hmm. so thank you for that reassurance okay so now naman i think this is um this is the next question na parang what kinds of breast pain ba ang considered na normal breast pain or yung mga ganyang mga lymph nodes kasi di ba minsan um, hormonal nga yung iba mas mas intense yung pain or like the soreness that they feel so when do you suggest that it's time to actually see a doctor when is it normal and when is it like not normal anymore go ahead anyone probably Dr. Ang na lang po <laughs> para sure no para sure, sure. Dr. Ang Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, alam mo, uh, for young women, lalo na in the menstruating space, no, maraming pain niya, no? So, uh, usually, uh, if your mens is regular, yung pain na you will feel a few days before mens, that's natural. You know? Kasi that's where the, uh, the, alam mo yung, if you all remember your biology in your high school days, when you ovulate kasi, uh, the entire body prepares for fertilization, no? and the breast tissue is part of the the organs that are preparing for eventual fertilization. Now, after uh, the the egg is released into the uh, fallopian tube, it's waiting for sperm to come in. No? While waiting for that, new breast breast natin uh, is preparing for to produce the milk, right? So the breast, the, the tendency of the breast is get congested. And when you have congestion, you have some fluid accommodation, accumulation, may pain yan eh. So yung mga pain uh, before men's is actually nothing to worry. Okay. Yung kay, kay, I think kay Chris, no, no, kay, kay, kay Chris, right? Chris, right? Chris. Yung pain, yung pain, ano klaseng pain yan? Sharp pain? Sharp pain though. Oh, yeah, Actually, see. it's before my period, so kaya po medyo na delay yung aking yeah, yeah, yeah. a check up. Yeah. So mahirap kasi isagot yung ano yung yung uh, Janina, no? yung question mo. Yung pain in general is not the usual presentation for breast cancer. Not usual. Usually, it's painless lumps, eh. painless. Yung kay Chris Suarez yana, the pain alerted her to something is going on. No? But for me, that's kind of a rarity, exception. Than the rule. I hope I answered the question. I hope okay. I answered the question. Sometimes it's the painless lumps, pana na kakatakot do. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, mga kaniyan paga paga akala wala pain man, eh, may buko lang, bali wala. Asa naman. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> How will yeah, I know? Yeah, you know, it's right to see Chris. That's right Oh my goodness. Yeah, you ask him, okay. you ask uh, Kerry, kung may pain ba siya. Kerry? Yeah, how was that, Kerry, yung lumps when you found out? Talagang sharp pain ba yan? Or, uh, I think no pain. pain. No pain at no all. Pain. Yeah, yeah. all the more nakakagulat, no? Oh my gosh. How about for you, Miss Nikoy? I mean, you, you survived twice. So how was yes. the first different from the second? Were they like, parang sharp pains or hindi din? The first one, I always say this story, it was divine intervention. My son was 10 months, he kicked my breast. Oh. Yeah, and then it was the only time that it became painful. And then when I when I touched it, um, uh, the, the 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 lump was there. 
So yeah, it wasn't uh, again dispelling you know that myth that getting bumped. No, it was just divine intervention that he kicked it. I was carrying him this way. He kicked it, yon. And then, uh, but then uh, the second one, no pain also. Eh, siguro lang as a first time. Kung it's the second time, the first time. Uh, so mas aware na ako. And when I when I touched it, I kinda knew okay. that it was another one. So okay. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yes, doc. Right. Yeah, alam mo, that's the typical, uh, usually may pa- some sort of contact, no? Uh, trauma or brain kick like what happened to Nikwe, no? And a lot of uh, women, in spite of uh, nung na-traumatize yung breast niya, they feel something. And they ascribe it to the the, you know, the trauma. And, and they uh, they tend to overlook. And then by, by the time na after three months, may bukol na. And they say na ah well doc wala yun kasi I was kicked there a few months ago. Yun yun eh. That was the 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 pain associated with the kicking. Should have alerted the women to come and see a doctor already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure to see na ko na 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 survive niya yung ano yung uh, stage one. No? So yun ang another misconception na the trauma can cause breast cancer. There's there's no truth to that. Being uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, may lump na talaga to begin with. Yes, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and how's the baby? He's <laughs> not just 10 months. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It's like, he's like your little angel. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because of that, you were mm-hmm. made aware. Yes, yes. Okay. Alright, okay. So, actually, ano ba? last question about wired contribute to that at all and parang do you in terms of ano lang ha, like lifestyle do you recommend na kasi other women like they prefer it other women naman diba they like the support as they sleep so how does that play out with breast cancer and all that well in i can serve uh we it's also one of those myths that we debunk the the wired the wired bra okay. yeah so for us it's not it doesn't cause it also there would be somewhere in the wire itself would be hitting once again like the first one kumbaga hitting the the lump where in feeling nila ayun na naman discomfort did this cause it so it's not yeah tama po ba ako doc <laughs> yeah tama yan iko ay tama yan alam mo nothing to do with that nothing with okay okay in the way in the way you bram okay nga kasi it will cause you the pain eh. kasi it's okay. not hit with something but well, hopefully, yeah, we always go back to ano, eh, early diagnosis, early okay. diagnosis, mammogram, breast exam, put this up. Got it. So, wala sa bra yun. Okay, girls, wala, wala, wala. you heard it here. <laughs> Confirmed. Kahit ano, whatever bra you choose, if you go braless too, <laughs> or wired push-up, kahit anong gusto nyo, sticky bra, minention ko lahat. <laughs> okay, so wala dun yun. Okay, so thank you so much for debunking those myths. And actually, we are down to the end of our program, but before we say goodbye to our wonderful guests, um, I would like to ano, engage you guys with our campaign, which is also their whoever's watching right now who wants to win a pair of um, fit flop <laughs> um, from the latest collection ang tinanong namin to them is share a pledge for a breast cancer awareness month be it a health and wellness pledge like i pledge to for example me i pledge to stress less and let go of the little things how about you doc what do you pledge <laughs> um sorry I, I don't know what kind of pledging you want from me no. Um, more like ano, we, we parang to anything at all. Na parang to always to keep reminding your loved ones maybe to have their breasts checked. <laughs> okay, okay. But can I say something about I can serve for the uh, sure, sure. YouTube forum? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't met, uh, haven't had the chance or the honor to meet uh, Nico, you know? But I know the founder, you no? Know? See, uh, Kara. Like, Kara. 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 Yeah, you know, uh, I want to tell you about Kara. Kara was a survivor. She was about 20 years old, Nico, you know? Yes. I was uh, one of the doctors who took care of her, you no? Know? But she's in- an incredible lady, you know? The I can serve. Is, uh, has grown to be a nationwide uh, cancer, yeah. the biggest in the country, yeah. no? through determination of people like Kara and of course Nikoi. No? Mm-hmm. Now, I want to tell you too that the President Duterte signed the cancer bill last year. Was it last year, Nikoi? Yes, Pa. It was yes. through the effort of 
the I Can Serve Foundation. The, that bill has been uh, suffering in uh, Congress Gora for about five years, six years, but they, they, they never wavered. They uh, continued working until the time of Duterte and he decided. Now, nagkaroon ng tayo ng COVID, pero because of their effort, the cancer bill calls for uh, nationwide anti-cancer treatment. No? Uh, it's very comprehensive and it's good for our country. Hopefully, by next year, kung may pera ng gobyerno, they will launch a full program and we'll be able to help a lot more cancer, not only breast, but the entire spectrum of cancer in our country. Yes, yes. And thanks to you, Nikoya, and your group. Incredible. Incredible energy. Incredible. Thank you so much, Doc. Okay, that's amazing. That's more than a pledge. <laughs> okay, so much more. Okay, let's move on to okay, Miss Nikoya's pledge. Go ahead. Me, I pledge to uh, continue taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, everything starts with self-care. So, yeah. And like you, Janina, Stress less. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you put my problem, let it, uh, and then usually time solves the problem. Let's not be reactive. We have our triggers. We have our own triggers. So at least we're aware of that. And we know how to you know, prioritize our health over reacting to situations that sometimes we can't control. Right? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead, Miss Carrie. Naman. Karen, Carrie! <laughs> um, I pledge to take care of myself too and to inspire women to be proactive in terms of their health, um, to do their mammograms and their self-checks monthly. Um, so that's my pledge. <laughs> Awesome. Yes, monthly. I have to remember that too. Dapat nasa schedules na natin yan, di ba? Kung may mga to-do lists tayo, dapat nandun yan, <laughs> di ba? Okay, and of course, Miss Chris, go ahead. Uh, for me, um, I pledge uh, to also take care of myself, of course. And I pledge uh, to share that there is hope and to always remember that life is beautiful. Yes, life is beautiful and also fleeting, di ba? So parang enjoy natin, let's enjoy life, di ba? And take care of ourselves so that we can love those around us even more. Awesome. Okay, so before we really say goodbye this time, maybe just promote wherever we can find you, your socials, to docs, which hospitals <laughs> can we find you, or can we have our consultations? Go ahead. You can promote. And it, for me? Well, you know, I'm also here as a Chinese gen. Uh, okay. This is an old hospital, 130 year old, old older than me. <laughs> years old. You are Chinese, so you know it uh, belongs to the Chinese community. It's a very good hospital, and we have all the latest uh, equipment. I also go to Cardinal Santos and uh, the lower St. Luke's, but with the COVID thing, like, like the patients don't want to come to see me anymore, so poor teleconsult. Okay, so full- but I am I have a full blown practice break. I'm old, okay, okay. but I'm still practicing. Yeah, okay. you can search your and uh, details online, no. Uh, I don't have that yet, but I'm sure na uh, you should know. Uh, I, I don't uh, advertise it, so. Sagi na lang namin yung links para sure. Okay, thank you, Bob. We'll we'll uh, schedule a consultation or a teleconsultation, de ba? And for the, the the ladies, go ahead. Where can we find you online? Um, go ahead. Your social platforms, yeah. Hey, um, I don't have a. a uh, I, I actually have a, the program, the Caring Carry program, which aims to address um, the issues of women and children here in San Juan, such as their health issues and um, educational. And I just want to thank I Can Serve because during the pandemic, um, that was around April, I Can Serve supplied PPEs to our breast cancer patients here in San Juan. So thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Ayan. So, Ker- Miss Kerry, yung Kerry Kerry, dapat ano, next time hindi lang San Juan. <laughs> okay? <laughs> We're gonna contact you, ah. <laughs> okay, so, awesome. And, of course, uh, Miss Chris. Ah, yeah. So, um, I'm also a member of I Can Serve Foundation. So, uh, for more information on how you can do breast health examination, or how we call it, uh, we call it uh, Sariling Salat Sa Suso, you can always visit the I Can Serve Foundation website. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
SSS. Yan ang pinaka-important na SSS. Okay. Thank you so much once again to our amazing guests. Okay. So, as we um, wrap up today, we just want to mention to everyone watching right now that this, you know, in celebration of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we do have our latest collection over at Fit Flop. In case you missed it though, again, they're in partnership with I Can Serve this October in a Part of the sales from this collection will be donated to the foundation cause which is really amazing not only do you get really fashionable stylish and yet very functional and comfy footwear but you know it can also benefit the cause and to everyone fighting this battle so yeah check out the collection on their website but they also have here a really short video Right here we have Fitflop's brand manager, Ms. Ruth Sanchez, who dropped by the Fitflop flagship store in SM Mall of Asia. And she's here via video to tell us more about the collection very quickly and their partnership with I Can Serve. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. As a brand that seeks to empower women, we at Fitflop firmly believe that the breast cancer awareness is an important advocacy that we should support. This is the fifth year that we've been supporting this cause, and we believe that raising awareness against this life-threatening disease should be of top priority now more than ever. This year, we want to promote it through our campaign, Pink Yourself Up, as an encouragement to everybody who is struggling. Whether the struggle is with breast cancer, mental health in this difficult time, or adjusting to the new circumstances, we want to remind everyone that there is hope and strength to be found in each one of us. Every October for the past five years, we've launched special collections such as the Flower Surfa, Ruffle Collection, Embroidery, Flower Crush, and Petal Ruffle, with proceeds donated to our partner foundation, I Can Serve. This year, I am happy to share with you our latest BCAM special, the Haley Collection. This comes in two silhouettes and three colors and is available in our Fitflop freestanding stores as well as online on Restaurant.com, Fitflop Lazada flagship store, and Zalora. Through this partnership, Fitflop intends to improve the quality of life for women afflicted with breast cancer, raising funds for a wonderful cause, and providing additional platform for I Can Serve to be heard. Together, we are fighters, we are beautiful, and we can find the courage to pick ourselves up to conquer whatever obstacles come our way. Thank you so much, Miss Ruth. You know, we're so glad to know that Fitflop still continues to empower women in the fight against breast cancer. And now here's a closer look at this year's Breast Cancer Awareness Month collection. Watch this. Wow, I love the collection. They look super comfy and truly the perfect shoes for super women right? with busy schedules, even in the new normal. Kahit sa bahay lang or grocery run or again, reminding yourself to have your checkup every so often. And also, you know, everyone who have to be on their feet the whole day. We need that support right? in life. Okay, so just to recap what Miss Ruth shared earlier, the Haley is available in two silhouettes, the slide and the back strap in beetroot, black, and of course, rose pink, the color of the month. And the Breast Cancer Awareness Month collection also includes the Lottie Iridescent Scale and the Riley Wave Style. So beautiful. You can get yours at Fitflop, freestanding stores nationwide, also at restaurant.com, the Fitflop flagship store in Lazada and Zalora. And a portion of the sales from this collection will be donated to I Can Serve Foundation once again this whole month of October. So go ahead, ladies. Pink yourself up with some retail therapy. Awesome. Okay, so with that said, we are announcing our winning pledge. Okay, so this has been an ongoing contest since the start of this live stream. So please do check the comments down below. We just announced our 
Parker. Also, congratulations. Okay, enjoy your new pair. And you know, there's so much more to learn about this whole campaign and advocacy and the fight against breast cancer. So to everyone who tuned in, thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys, you know, were informed and were enlightened as well. And that, you know, we're uplifted too despite the challenging battle that it is. Okay, so yes, don't forget to follow us once again here on this page, FitFlopPH. Follow me then at Janina Chan and everyone else here on this amazing panel, strong, amazing warriors and survivors. And yeah, that is it for today's Pink Yourself Up online show and event. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. Just a reminder once again, keep on checking yourself. <laughs> stay healthy, always stay happy and positive. And again, it was my pleasure to host for everyone today. See you guys next time. Have a great weekend.